Let's say guys, we have two containers containing different types of gas. So on the first container, we have gas 1 and the second container, we have gas 2. Now, let's say meron tayo ditong fine openings. Okay, kung saan sisingaw yung ating gas. Well, what we can observe is that different gases diffuse from a container having a fine opening at different rates. Like for example, dito sa ating first container, our gas 1 is leaking at a certain rate. And then, we can observe that in gas 2, yung rate ng diffusion ng ating gas is different sa rate ng diffusion dito sa ating gas 1. Well, of course, our pictures here are just for visual representation. No? Medyo exaggerated ang ating pinapakitang figure. But you can also observe this on gases in different tubes. For example, we have gas 1 and the gas is diffusing at this rate. And another gas 2, which is a different gas, is also diffusing at a different rate. And just like what I said earlier, different gases diffuse at different rates. And this is dependent on the densities or molecular weight of the substance. Well, dito pa lang sa ating statement, makikita na natin that the factor that is affecting the rate of diffusion is the molecular weight of the substance or its density. And the law governing such diffusion was first enunciated by Graham in 1829 and bears his name. At yan ngayon ang tinatawag nating Graham's Law of Diffusion. So now let us discuss, ano ba tong tinatawag nating Graham's Law of Diffusion? So by definition, at constant temperature and pressure, the rates of diffusion of various gases vary inversely as the square root of their densities or molecular weight. So katulad ng example natin earlier, we have gas 1 and we have gas 2. So ito yung gagamitin natin to represent yung mga ibibigay nating mga equations. So, ang sabi dito sa ating definition ng Graham's Law of Diffusion, the rates of diffusion of various gases vary inversely as the square root of their densities or molecular weight. So, that means our rate of diffusion, let's say R, is equal to 1 over the square root of its density. Okay, so dahil pinag-uusapan natin dito yung gas 1 and gas 2, to represent that, let's say, the rate of diffusion of gas 1 is equal to 1 over the square root of density of gas 1. And the rate of diffusion or ating gas 2 is equal to 1 over the square root of the density of gas 2. So dito sa ating Graham's law of diffusion, usually we are going to compare yung rate ng diffusion between two or more gases. So, on this example, we have two types of gases. So, we have gas 1 and gas 2. So, let's say we want to compare the rate of diffusion between gas 1 and gas 2. So, we can have the ratio between uh, the rate of diffusion of gas 1 and the rate of diffusion of gas 2. Which will be equal to R1 is equal to 1 over the square root of density 1 and R2 is equal to 1 over the square root of density Okay, so which is also equal to 1 over the square root of density 1 times square root of density 2 over 1. Okay, so therefore our ratio for R1 over R2 is equal to the square root of density 2 over the square root of density 1. Okay. So, this is our formula in comparing the rate of diffusion ng dalawang gases. Okay, but as you can see dito sa ating definition, the relationship of the rate of diffusion with our molecular weight is the same, no? The rate of diffusion of various gases vary inversely in their molecular weight. Okay, so what does it mean? We are at constant pressure and temperature. And since we have the same pressure and temperature, then it means both gases must have the same molar volume. So that means we can multiply both the numerator and the denominator with the molar volume. No? So that means we'll have R1 over R2 is equal to the square root of density of gas 2 over the square root of density of gas 1 
And let us multiply this to the square root of molar volume over molar volume. Because they are equal. So this is basically equal to 1, right? So we will have R1 over R2 is equal to the square root of density 2 molar volume over square root of density 1 molar volume. Okay, so what can we get when we multiply our density with molar volume? So let me write that here. And I'll write that in green para mas makita natin kaibahan yan. Our density is in mass over volume, right? So density is mass over volume. Now, if we're going to multiply that to molar volume, uh, we will have density which is mass over volume multiplied to the molar volume which is volume per mole. Okay? So, our volume will be cancelled out. So, ano may iwan sa atin? We will have here mass per mole. So, ano tong mass per mole? This is our molecular weight. Diba? So, that means we will have here R1 over R2 is equal to the square root of molecular weight of 2 over the square root of the molecular weight of gas 1. Okay? So, this is basically our equation. Ito yung mga gagamitin natin. Equation for the Graham's law of diffusion. But, we have to take note also kasi uh, we will be solving different types of problems so dapat medyo aware tayo uh, what type of problems na pwede natin ma-encounter in the future. So, we have to take note that our rate here is equal to distance over time. Diba? So, that means our R is equal to distance, let's say distance is S over time. Okay, so S is distance, T is for time. So we have to take note of that. Kasi minsan, ang given sa atin is yung distance na na-travel ng gas 1 and we need to get the time. O sometimes naman, given yung time and then we need to get the, dis the distance uh, traveled no, ng ating gas. So, how are we going to use that in comparison? So, we will have R1 over R2, which is equal to the distance traveled of our gas 1 over the time, and S2 over T2, okay? And this is equal to the square root of the molecular weight of gas 2 over the molecular weight of gas 1. Okay, so let's say, ang given natin is the gas was passed to a tube. So, let's say we have a tube. And then, dito, may pumapasok na gas 1. And dito, may pumapasok na gas 2. So, sabi natin, at certain time, like, time is equal to, let's say, 2 seconds. Or, let's say, this is 2 minutes. So, we will be asked at given this time kung hanggang saan yung makukover ng ating gas 1 na distance and hanggang saan naman na makukover ng gas 2 na distance. Okay? So, given that, our time is equal. T1 is equal to T2. Okay? Because they started at the same time. So, that means kapag ganyan ang given natin, uh, our T1 is equal to T2 so this will be cancelled out. Diba? So, kapag meron tayong ganyang given, our formula will be S1 over S2 is equal to the square root of molecular weight of gas 2 over the square root of the, I mean, over the molecular weight of gas 1. So, yan ang magiging formula natin if T1 is equal to T2. Okay? So, take note natin yan dito. Okay? So, basically, ganyan ang mga gagamitin natin na equation. Dito na yan maglalaro. Dito sa R1 over R2 is equal to the square root of molecular weight of 2 over the square root of molecular weight of 1.
Okay, so para makita natin kung paano ginagamit yan, let us try to solve this problem here. A particular gas is found to diffuse 1.33 times as fast as another. The faster gas is analyzed to have a molecular weight of 17. What is the molecular weight of the other? So meron tayong dalawang gas na nandito sa ating given. So we have, let's say, gas 1 and we have gas 2. Okay, so let us try to assign kung alin yung gagawin nating faster gas and which is the slower gas. So I will choose gas 1 as the faster gas and gas 2 as the slower gas. So a particular gas is found to diffuse 1.33 times as fast as the other. So that means this is gas 1 which is our faster gas. So rate of gas 1 is equal to 1.33 times the rate of gas 2. So this will be our equation when it comes to the relationship between the rate of gas 1 and the rate of gas 2. Now, given yung molecular weight ng faster gas, which is gas 1. So the molecular weight of the faster gas is 17. So the molecular weight of gas 1 is equal to 17. And then, ang kailangan nating makuha is yung molecular weight ng gas 2, which is the smaller or the slower gas. Okay, so balikan natin yung ating formula. We have R1 over R2 is equal to the square root of the molecular weight of gas 2 over the square root of the molecular weight of gas 1. So ang kailangan natin makuha is yung molecular weight ng gas 2. So let us isolate that. So square root of the molecular weight of gas 2 is equal to R1 times the square root of the molecular weight of gas 1 over R2. So, substitute natin itong mga values natin dito. So, R1 is equal to 1.33 R2. So, we have the square root of the molecular weight of gas 2 is equal to R1 which is 1.33 okay, times R2 times the square root of molecular weight of gas 1 which is 17. And this is divided by R2. So we have R2 in numerator and R2 in the denominator. So we can cancel that out. So ang may iwan sa atin is the molecular weight of gas 2. Okay, the square root of the molecular weight of gas 2, which is equal to 1.33 times the square root of 17. Okay, so that means the square root of the molecular weight of gas 2 is equal to, let us try to solve that in our calculator, we have 1.33 times the square root of 17, which is equal to 5.4837. Okay, so we need to get the molecular weight of gas 2, so we need to square both sides, so we have Square root of the molecular weight of gas 2 squared is equal to 5.4837 squared. So, molecular weight of gas 2 is equal to, now we are going to square yung answer natin kanina. Then we have 30.07. Okay? And our unit will be arms per gram mole. Okay? So, this is our final answer for this problem. Now, let us try to solve yung second problem natin. Ammonia diffuses 1.236 times faster than the unknown hydrocarbon. That is 92.258% carbon and 7.724% hydrogen. Determine the empirical and molecular formula of the compound. So, ang pinahanap sa atin, empirical and molecular formula. Okay, ng ating hydrocarbon, which is our unknown compound. So, we have two gases here, no? We have ammonia, which is NH3. And our gas 2 is unknown hydrocarbon. So, ammonia diffuses 1.36 times faster than the unknown hydrocarbon. So, that means the rate of ammonia 
is equal to 1.236 times the rate of the hydrocarbon. So, yung formula natin is R1 over R2 is equal to where our gas 1 is ammonia. So, we have the rate of NH3 over the rate of the hydrocarbon, okay, is equal to the square root of the molecular weight of the hydrocarbon over the square root of the molecular weight of ammonia. Okay? Now, the rate of ammonia is equal to 1.236, the rate of hydrocarbon, di ba? So, that means uh, R NH3 over R hydrocarbon is equal to 1.236. Okay? So, that means this is equal to 1.236 because this one is this one. Okay? So, alam natin yung molecular weight ng ammonia because NH3 has a molecular weight of nitrogen is 14 plus 3. So, the molecular weight of ammonia is 17 grams per gram mole. So, that means the square root of the molecular weight of the hydrocarbon is equal to 1.236. 236 times the square root of the molecular weight of ammonia, which is 17. So, the square root of the molecular weight of the hydrocarbon is equal to, let us calculate all that again. We have 1.236 times the square root of 17. So, we have 5.096. And then, we will be squaring both sides. So, the molecular weight of the hydrocarbon is equal to 5.096 squared, which is equal to, we'll be squaring that, 25.97. Sorry, 25.97. Grams per mole. Okay? Ngayon, pinakukuha sa atin is yung empirical formula niya. So, ano ba ibig sabihin ng empirical formula? An empirical formula is a formula that is giving proportion of the elements present in a compound, but not the actual numbers or arrangement of the atom, di ba? So, that means, ang empirical formula, ipapakita lang sa atin yung proportion ng ating mga elements. So, we have hydrocarbon here. So, therefore, meron lang tayong carbon and hydrogen. Okay, so kailangan makuha natin ano yung proportion niya. So let's say our proportion is x, so we'll have hx cx. Okay, but usually carbon is written first, so therefore this is cx hx. So paano natin makukuha kung ano yung value ng x para dito sa ating hydrocarbon as an empirical formula, yung proportion. So diyan natin gagamitin yung uh, binigay sa ating percentage. We have 92.258% carbon and 7.724% hydrogen, okay? So, ang given natin, let me write that here. Carbon is 92.258% and hydrogen is 7.742%. Okay, so let's say we have 100 grams of our hydrocarbon. Okay, so that means we will have carbon of 92.258 grams and hydrogen of 7.742 grams. Diba? So the molecular weight of carbon is 12 grams per mole and for hydrogen is 1 gram per mole. Diba? So, let us convert this into moles. So, for carbon, we have 92.258 grams times 1 mole over 12 grams. And para naman sa hydrogen, we have 7.742 grams times 1 mole over 1 grams. Okay? 
So our grams will be cancelled out. So our answer here will be in moles, diba? So first, 92.258. divided by 12 is equal to 7.688 mole. And ito naman, 7.742 times 1 will be the same. 7.742 mole. Okay, so we have now carbon in mole and hydrogen in mole. Now, Dahil kukunin natin yung empirical formula, kailangan makita natin yung proportion nila. So, in hydrocarbon, laging mas uh, mababa yung quantity ng carbon. So, we will be dividing this by the number of moles ng carbon. Okay, so let us divide this by 7.688 and also our hydrogen as 7.688. So, this will be equal to 1. 7.688 divided by 7.688 is 1. 7.742 divided by 7.688 is also equal to 1. No? So, mababa lang yan. 7. Point, um, 7.42 divided by yung answer natin is also 1.007. So, this is basically equal to 1 na rin. So, ang proportion ng carbon sa hydrogen is 1 is to 1. So, meron tayong CXHX, that means our X is equal to 1 because 1 carbon, 1 hydrogen ang ating uh, ratio. No? So, that means we have here CH. Yan ang ating empirical formula. Okay, so, nasagutan na natin yung unang tanong. Now, kailangan natin makuha yung molecular formula which is now which is our chemical formula having the actual numbers or the arrangement ng ating mga atoms. So ngayon kailangan natin makuha ano ba talaga yung ating formula ng ating hydrocarbon. So makukuha natin yan by dividing yung molecular weight ng ating hydrocarbon sa empirical weight ng ating hydrocarbon. So, tandaan natin, nakuha na natin yung molecular weight kanina ng ating hydrocarbon, which is 25.97. No? Sulat ko lang ulit. The molecular weight of our hydrocarbon is equal to uh, 25.97 grams per mole. 25.97 grams per mole. So, ang kailangan nating makuha is yung molecular formula. Okay, so, kailangan natin makuha muna is yung empirical weight. Meron na tayong molecular weight, so kailangan natin makuha yung empirical weight ng ating hydrocarbon. So, ano yung empirical weight? See, that is how many grams per mole ng ating hydrocarbon based from their empirical formula. So, we have 1 carbon, 1 hydrogen. So, we have 12. Para sa carbon, we have 12 grams per mole plus for our hydrogen, we have 1 grams per mole. So, therefore, our empirical weight is equal to 13 grams per mole. Now, in order to get yung talagang value or molecular formula ng ating hydrocarbon, which is CXHX, kailangan we have to divide yung molecular weight sa ating empirical weight para makuha yung X. So, our X is equal to molecular weight ng ating hydrocarbon divided by the empirical weight of our hydrocarbon. So, the molecular weight is equal to 25.97 grams per mole divided by our empirical weight which is 13 grams per mole. Okay? So, let us try to solve that. We have 25.97 divided by 13, we have 1.997, which is equal to 2, no? If you are going to round that off, we have x is equal to 2. So, we are going to substitute that here. So, our molecular formula is equal to carbon 2, hydrogen 2. 
Okay, so this is our final answer dito sa ating question.